What's Gucci everyone? It's AJ here again. And in this video, I'm gonna making be making a video on Swift closures. Now, closures, excuse me for a second here, are what allow us to easily add extra functionality to methods or a way to kind of inline brief focus syntax expressions to be able to write nice code. For instance, we can re redefine, re redefine methods to be able to kind of bend to our will. So let me show you guys a quick example here. So let me do something first by making an array here. And let's make an array called names. And I'm going to set it equal to AJ, comma, Bob, comma, and let's make this uh, CJ, and let's make this third one Bebop. And so right now I've got this array here. And something that I could easily do to any of these arrays is I could do var sorted equals sort name. So I could sort the array, and as you can see on the left, the following array got sorted. AJ is the first thing, then Bebop is second, then Bob, and then CJ. So the array got properly sorted. But what if we wanted to reverse it? Well, one thing I could do is we could do this reverse method. Or what if we, we didn't want to just simply reverse it? We wanted to define the way the sorting method worked. We wanted to define how sorting works. So maybe sorting doesn't work by just comparing the strings intrinsically, it looks at the last letter instead of the first letter. Well, the way we can do this is with an anonymous function or with, with, with a function passed into the sorting method that is known as a closure, which means we can add a kind of our own meaning to our function. So let's change how sorted works here for a second. So right now I'm gonna write this function and right now, simply, I'll call it backwards because we'll start small. And what I'll do is I'll take two parameters, S1 and S2. And I'm going to call that a string. And simply, it's going to return a Boolean because it needs to return a Boolean to be able to compare what's true or false. And then it's going to return which one is greater. So S is S1 greater than S2? So... What's happening here is backwards is comparing the two strings it gets, S1 and S2, and it's saying, hey, do you have, um, is S1 greater than S2? If it is, return true. Otherwise, return false. And so now what we can do is with sort here, I can pass in the backwards function, if it didn't give me all these parentheses, And we can run it. And as you can see now, now I have the reverse array. I have CJ, Bob, B, Bob, and AJ. In fact, I have, yes, I have the same thing as if I were to call reverse on this array. Because I was able to define how my array worked. And so, if I wanted to, I could define di other different things too. Maybe I could do... Where is it? Something else I could do is... Sorry guys, had to cut there because I made a big mistake. But something other, something otherwise that I could do is I could change this backwards method, which is now badly named, to compare the lengths of the strings. And instead now my array is sorted by, from um, uh, biggest size to smallest size in terms of the size of the string. I had to change these to NS strings, which stands for... Um, what is that company Steve Jobs started? Um, New Spark? No. But it's the NS stands for that company he started called. Oh, I forgot what it's called. I won't. I won't waste your time. But anyway, now I can compare them by the length. And if I switch this sign, hopefully now I'm comparing it. Now I'm comparing it from smallest to biggest. So it's pretty cool how I can use. I can pass in what it's called. What is called closures and simply um, throw around the length. 
Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and have the best day of your lives.